Hello, everyone. My name is Christine. In this course, I'm going to talk about the topic understanding and using social media. What is social media? The social media refers to the online platforms and tools that people can share opinions, experiences, insights, perceptions, and various media, including photos, video, and music, with each other. Social media can take many different forms, including text, images, audio, or video. Additionally, the network structure enables communications and collaboration on a massive scale. The key in the social media is the users. Users can control and use the media, often at little or no cost. The social media have several features. First, people can create online content by themselves. They can share their thoughts, ideas, opinion, and files, such as images, audio, video, and photos online. Everyone can be a publisher in the social media. Thus, the social media change people from content readers into contributors and publishers. They also bring a big change in how people discover, read, and share news, information, and content. In addition, people move from monologue to dialogue in the social media. It means that everyone can easily interact and communicate with other people. Moreover, the social media can be accessed by everyone. It does not require expensive equipment or a government-granted license. Even you don't know the details of the information technology, you also can easily use the social media to share your content and information. There is an interesting video to explain the concept of social media. In this video, you will know what. Are the differences between the traditional and social media? Let's watch the video. So this is you, and this is your friend Frank. Say you talk about this and that, and somebody writes it down, and somebody else reads it. Will it mean to them what it means to you? <laughs> nope. You determine meaning by the words and gestures, the content, and also what you know about him and what he knows about you, and what you've discussed in the past, your relationship, and conversations are two-way interactions. Reading the content later isn't like participating. In the previous couple of hundred years, we got good at duplicating content. Well, big businesses and governments did mainly. We made copies of this and these and broadcasts of that and those. And this, lots of this. Then we started buying records and tapes and discs, and built our own piles of content. Meanwhile, conversations stayed one to one, even with telephones. In a way, content and conversation compete. You can talk with Frank about this or that, or you can read a book about this or watch a show about that. But they don't relate to you or interact with you. Well. Then we created the biggest content duplicating system ever: computers, wireless, internet, the whole digital thing. But digital is different in three key ways. Information flows both directions. Content is available now on demand. No broadcasts, no physical discs, and copies are perfect and cheap. Digital media has gotten so cheap that individuals, you and I, can duplicate and distribute our own content: words, pictures, games, videos, and more. Computers and smartphones can create, capture, and copy all of it basically for free. So, back to you and Frank talking about this. If you converse online and decide to share the words, images, and whatever with people, it's more than just content to them. 
They can connect the content to the person. They can communicate back to you and participate in the conversation. Your content could lead to other content or to a new relationship. And the whole back and forth is becoming its own form of information and entertainment. That's what's happening. Someone decided to call it social media. But it's basically this huge, unpredictable worldwide network of conversations that's just exploding. They cover big topics like news and events and the little things that mass media missed. And all that mass media content is getting pulled into these conversations, sometimes legally, <laughs> sometimes not. We're getting more and more information and entertainment from each other. It's challenging and changing the duplicated content media world that worked for a couple of hundred years. You and Frank and your friends and their friends have always shared and conversed. Now you're having digital conversations that can be shared, saved, rated, scored, copied, cited, commented, forwarded, noted, quoted, voted, geocoded, sold, stolen, measured, treasured, linked, synced, syndicated, vindicated, printed, argued, searched and shared again. Starting new relationships or restarting old ones. People in groups, causes and companies, anyone can talk in any form. Anyone can listen. Anyone can relate to anyone else worldwide. That's social media, explained visually by Say It Visually. Feel free to embed, download and share this video in your digital conversations. This picture describes the emergence and rise of mass social media. It compares the traditional media with social media. Most of people are familiar with the traditional media, including television, movies, radio, and newspapers. The traditional media observe what happens in the world and then publish the related information and news to the public. Thus, the traditional media or companies control all of the information and content. However, the social media change, changes the way that the traditional media works. The tools of social media such as blog, video blogs, forums, wikis are controlled by users. With social media, content is produced and consumed by the users. So, users can contribute and pull their content to the social media. The power of media is shifted from institutional control to the consumer control. The social media is very powerful. It is changing our world continuously. The power to define and control a brand is shifting from cooperations and institutions to individuals and communities. This means that the individuals could have more influence than the organizations to the public. So, how does the social media influence people? Many researcher reports provide several information for this. In the social media, 91% of people say consumer reviews are the top one aid to buying decisions. This means that people like to buy products based on others' opinions. Second, 87% of people trust a friend's recommendation over critics' review. The influence of friends may larger than other people. When making purchase decisions, most of us like to trust peer opinions more than advertisements. Thus, such kind of word of mouth power has greater impact than TV ads. Social media sites are the fattest growing categories on the web. Therefore, there are more and more people using the social media. According to a research report, born more than 73% of active online users have read a blog. More than 45% have started their own blog. More than 
seven percent have joined a social network. More than fifty-five percent have uploaded photos, and more than eighty-three percent have watched video clips. In summary, the social media greatly influence our daily life. More and more people like to use the social media. Social media has many advantages. Generally, it can help you in all stage of marketing, self promotion, maintaining your relations with the public, and providing better、uh, customer services. Social media is very practical. So, what you can get from the social media? In this slide, I have listed a lot of advantages of the social media. You can learn what people are saying about you, and you can understand people's opinions. You can create buzz for any event and campaign to catch attention of the public. The social media can help you increase the brand exposure, find new opportunities and potential customers, and spread your message fast. For a company, the social media can support. Products and services, improve the search engine visibility, gain the competitive intelligence. A company also can maintain the relationships with its customer by the social media. The social media led the company to be an industry leader, not a follower. There are many types of social media, including blogging, social networking, bookmarking sites. Video and photo sharing sites, virtual reality, and so on. In our previous course, we have discussed some of them, such as blog, wikis, and RSS. They are not only the popular application in Web 2.0, but also a part of the social media. In this topic, we will discuss other types of social media, such as mic micro blogging. Social bookmarking and video sharing sites. What is micro blogging? It is very popular right now. Many celebrities or politicians like to use the micro blogging to communicate and interact with their fans. It is a form of blogging that allows users to write messages and publish them. The length of each message in the micro blogging is limited. Generally, it is up to 140 characters. Such kind of message can either be viewed by anyone, or by a restricted group that can be chosen by the user. In addition, a message can be submitted by different ways, including text messaging, instant messaging, email. MP3 or just on the web. Many micro blogs provide short messages about personal matters, so it is called status update. Similar to micro blogs, many social networking websites such as Facebook or LinkedIn allow users to update their status. The famous micro blog is Twitter. In Twitter, users can send their messages and read other users' updates. The message in Twitter is called tweet, which is a text-based post up to 140 character in length. In Taiwan, the famous micro blog is Plurk. This is the website which is very similar to. The Twitter. There is a is a video to explain how the Twitter works. Let's watch the video. So, what are you doing? It's one of the first questions we often ask friends and family. Even if the answer is just mowing the lawn or cooking dinner, it's interesting to us. It makes us feel connected and a part of each other's lives. Unfortunately, most of our day-to-day -day lives are hidden from people that care. Of course, we have email and blogs and phones to keep us connected. But you wouldn't send an email to a friend to tell them you're having coffee. Your friend doesn't need to know that. But 
What about people that want to know about the little things that happen in your life? Real life happens between blog posts and emails. And now there's a way to share. This is Twitter in plain English. Thanks to Twitter, it's possible to share short, bite-sized updates about your life and follow the updates of people that matter to you via the web. Here's how it works. Meet Carla. She's addicted to her mobile phone, reads blogs every day, and has contacts all over the world. She heard about Twitter and was skeptical. After some of her friends couldn't stop talking about it, she gave it a try. She signed up for free and saw that Twitter pages look a little like blogs with very short posts. Each page is personal and has updates from friends. She got started by looking up her friends on Twitter.com. After finding a few, she clicked follow to start seeing their updates on her Twitter page. Within hours, she began to see a different side of people she chose to follow. She didn't know that Stephen in Seattle was a baseball fan or that Julia in London was reading a new investment book. The little messages from Twitter painted a picture of her friends, family, and co-workers that she'd never seen before. It was the real world. Soon, she became a fan of Twitter and posted updates every day. Her friends followed her updates and learned that she recently discovered a passion for Van Halen. They could see Carla's life between blog posts and emails. For Carla, Twitter worked because it was simple. The updates were always short, under 140 characters. Plus, she could post updates and follow her friends using the Twitter website, software on her browser, a mobile phone, or instant messages. By asking members to answer the question, what are you doing, Carla found that Twitter brought her closer to people that matter to her, 140 characters at a time. Find out what your friends are doing at Twitter.com. I'm Leela Fever, and this has been Twitter in Plain English on The Common Craft Show. No. Let's learn what is social bookmarking. Social bookmarking is a method for internet users to organize, store, manage, and search for bookmarks of resources online. When you find out some interest, interesting web pages, you can save them as bookmarks in the social bookmarking site and then share them with others. The famous social bookmarking sites are delicious and thick. These two links are their websites. This is the Dig website. And this is the Delicious. In Delicious, you can view the shared bookmarks by different categories. Art and design, entertainment, food, news and politics, technology and science and travel. When you think a web page is interesting, you can save it as your favorite bookmark. Also, you can see how many users save the bookmarks and their comments to them at what time. Similar to Delicious, Lake also has the same functions. There is a video for you to help you understand the concept of the social bookmarking. Let's watch the video. <laughs> it's just too much. Did you know that there are over 15 billion web pages? To make sense of it all, we need ways to pluck out the best pages and save them for later. We have choices. We could bookmark or add to favorites in our web browser. Nah, it quickly becomes messy. Plus, these bookmarks are tied to only one computer. This is the old way. There's a new way that doesn't use a browser. It uses a website. This is called a social bookmarking site, and the one we'll use today is called Delicious. It makes bookmarking more useful and fun. We'll focus on three things. How to get started with bookmarking, how bookmarks are organized by tags, and why this kind of bookmarking is social. First, go to delicious.com to sign up for a free account. While you're signing up, you'll see an easy way to add a couple of buttons to your browser. These are important. The tag button is how you'll add new bookmarks to the website. On any website, you can click tag to save that site as a delicious bookmark. Easy. Consider this example. You're a teacher who often uses the web to find math lessons for 8th graders. You're overwhelmed by all the sites. There are just too many to remember. Using delicious, remembering sites is as easy as tagging them. Here's one. Oh, nice. Perfect. Here's what happens when you tag a site. A new window opens and asks for more information. 
You can add keywords or tags that describe the site. These will help you find bookmarks later. You might tag this site, Algebra, Best of, Tutorial, Math, and Homework. Then click Save to save it on the Delicious website. When you save a page like this, two things happen. First, the site is saved with all your other bookmarks on Delicious.com. Second, the tags are saved in a list of all your tags. You just repeat this process for every site you want to save. This is bookmarking. Let's fast forward two months to make our second point, why tags are so important. Let's say you now have a hundred bookmarked sites. Chaos, right? Well, since you added tags, you have a way to sort the bookmarks by the tags you assigned. To find all the sites about algebra, you click the algebra tag and voila, 100 becomes 3. All your bookmarks are now more findable thanks to tags. But that's only part of the fun. Now, let's look at the social part of bookmarking to make our third point. Think about your fellow teachers. Couldn't they benefit from seeing your bookmarks? Well, they can. Delicious bookmarks are public. This means that your friends and peers can see your bookmarks and use your tags just like you. That's why this is called social bookmarking. Your bookmarks can benefit other people. Think about it this way. You start bookmarking algebra sites and your peers can see the interesting sites you find. Then they start bookmarking too. Within a few weeks, a group of teachers are all bookmarking their favorite math websites and because they're all public, everyone discovers new and relevant materials. Together, you create a network that produces a steady stream of interesting and useful websites, all organized by tags on the Delicious website. The lesson is that social bookmarking sites take a world of chaos and make it orderly. Remember, there are three steps to get started. First, go to delicious.com to sign up and add the buttons to your browser. Second, start bookmarking sites with tags. And third, be social. Notice how useful and fun other people's bookmarks can be. I'm Lee Lefevre. And this has been Social Bookmarking in Plain English on The Common Craft Show. In a social bookmarking site, users can assign to each bookmark that they want to share. So, tagging is a significant feature of social bookmarking site. It enables users to organize their bookmarks in flexible ways and develop shared vocabularies known as Foxonomies. So, how to use the social bookmarking site? I will show you a video which will teach you how to use it. Don't worry, it's easy. You just need six steps. Let's watch the video. How to use a social bookmarking site. Social bookmarking is a way to store and share your web page bookmarks. Learn how to use a social bookmarking site for information gathering and social networking. You will need a social bookmarking service account. Step 1. Choose a social bookmarking service, such as delicious.com or dig.com, and register as a new user. Step 2. Enter a keyword into the social bookmarking site search engine to generate a sample list of social bookmarks from other users. Take time to explore other users' bookmarks to get an overview of how the site's bookmarking community works. Step 3. Use tags, keyword descriptions that a user assigns to a bookmark. Step 4. Add bookmarklet buttons to your browser's toolbar. Most bookmarking services offer these as one-click tagging tools to use while web surfing. One surface's toolbar buttons include one for tagging, another that opens all of your bookmarks, and a third that searches them. Step 5. Find a web page to recommend. Click the bookmarklet button on your browser toolbar, opening a tag window. Then, enter keyword tags and click Save. Step 6. Participate in the social bookmarking site, using it as a depository for online information and a way to make online friendships. Did you know? In 2008, Forbes magazine declared 23-year-old Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, the world's youngest self-made billionaire. The other type of social media is video sharing. A lot of video sharing sites are famous, especially YouTube. Video sharing sites that you upload videos and share them with people. They could be a perfect repository for video blogs, topics, seminars, witty PowerPoints, commercials, and so on. You can share any kinds of video as you want. The video that you share helps you gain exposure 
and direct traffic back to your website. Additionally, you can use a camera or mobile phone to produce the video. The production cost is very low, so immediacy and content of the video is more important than the quality. YouTube is a consumer media company where people can watch and share original videos online. Now, YouTube has become a famous social media for video sharing and also has become an important place for both people and business. So, what can be done with YouTube? On the YouTube, many kinds of video which related to personal interests, events, and news, personal talents, and business are shared. Users can easily find the video about companies, products, and people. This is a search example in YouTube. You can use any keyword in YouTube's search engine to search the video. Users can read videos. YouTube shows the average rating and the number of times it has been viewed. Users can also make comments and see others' comments. You can find, join, and create videos groups to connect and interact with people. YouTube provides customized services to users such as subscribing to member videos, saving favorites, and creating playlists. The video on YouTube can be integrated into websites or blogs. Make videos public or private. Finally, users can select to broadcast their videos publicly or share them privately with specific friends and family. They can make videos public or private to control their privacy. That's all for this class. Thanks for your listening. See you next time.